So one important kind of free body diagram that's important to set up is ones about uh, banked roads. So this has to do with um, um, the idea that if you are attempting to drive or make a turn uh, like on a circular path, like if you're going pretty slow, it's easy to make a circular turn. Like if, if, I'm, if I'm driving in a car here and this is an aerial view of my car and I want to make a right turn like this, okay, I'm going to... I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this circular path, but what force is gonna act as my centripetal force would be friction with the road. So I don't know if you've ever tried to, if you're in a car and you try to take a turn way too fast, you're gonna skid because the friction, you're not gonna have enough friction to make that turn. Like it's not gonna provide enough uh, centripetal force to allow you to make that centripetal acceleration. But uh, a common thing you can do on racetracks when you're trying to go really, really fast and, you, and move really fast on a turn same with highway entrances or exits if you, or, or highways that are making big turns is you bank the road, okay, so that you, you're at an angle. And what this, uh, and let's just describe what's happening here. So like on a racetrack or on a freeway, you might have a turn where the car is at an incline here instead of being flat on the ground. And let's draw a free body diagram of the car here. So you see like it's moving in a circular path at this angle. Let's assume for simplicity that it's the same angle all around, around the path. If I were to draw a free body diagram, I would say, well, I have gravity coming down. I have a normal force perpendicular to the incline, right? And then I'm gonna ignore friction. So let's say there's no friction. So we're banking it, assuming no friction. These are the only two forces that we have here. So you can see that you can make this turn without friction, even if you are on ice, because the net force will be this way. As long as you're, you're going in the circle properly, your acceleration is going to be in this direction towards the center of the circle. That's my centripetal acceleration because I'm going in a circle. So the net force is going to cancel out. So if I were to split this normal force into its vertical and horizontal directions. Note that normally in an inclined plane, we always do the direction like along the ramp as the x-axis, but here it's better to leave it as horizontal because the acceleration is horizontal. The acceleration is not up or down the incline. The acceleration is horizontal. So in this case, it's better to leave your x and y coordinate systems as positive x to the left here and positive y up. So really it's the normal force that has the different components. See how different this is with the inclined planes? So it's an inclined plane, but we do it horizontally and vertically as opposed to um, rotating it like we were doing just when it's sliding up and down the inclined plane. And that's because the acceleration, see if I do it in, in the, the coordinate axes where I go down, down the inclined plane and up, my acceleration has both components in the x and y direction. And it's just more, more tedious to calculate it that way. So here, um, what are my forces, um, or what are my component forces? This force here is Fn. The horizontal component is going to be Fn sine theta. And the horizontal component, or the vertical component, is going to be Fn cosine theta. Because this angle is theta, so the adjacent side is cosine, the opposite side is sine. Okay, and so it's n there's no acceleration in the vertical direction, right? Because the acceleration is all horizontal. So in the y direction, we'll find that mg is equal to fn cosine theta. And in the x direction, the net force, um, the net force is just fn sine theta. But the acceleration is centripetal, so it's equal to mv squared over r, where r is, well, we'll use little r. V is the speed that you're going, and R is that. So, so it just depends on the context of the problem as to what you're trying to solve for. But this is the general. Like you can, you can calculate. Maybe if you're trying to find the ideal. Sometimes you're trying to find the ideal banking angle for a certain maximum speed. So if I'm trying to solve for theta, I'm going to divide these two equations to cancel out the normal force. So I'm going to say fn sine theta over fn cosine theta is equal to say mv squared over r divided by mg. And we did this before kind of, but um, this is tangent of theta is equal to v squared over rg. And so your ideal banking angle is gonna be the inverse tangent or arc tangent of v squared over rg like that.
Okay, so that's the ideal banking angle. I don't want you to memorize this equation. I just want to make sure you understand how to set up the free body diagram and draw it um, for something with a with a banked incline. Now, if, if I were to add friction, friction is going to make it kind of more of a complicated. So let me repeat the exercise. But I have this angle, and my car is right here. So I have my force downward. I have my normal force. Now the key part is which direction is friction going to help you? Now, if you are, um, friction is supposed to help you stay going in the circle. So the frictional force is actually gonna be this way. Because if you don't have enough friction, you would actually be trying to slide up the ramp. So the friction's probably gonna help you go down this way. It kinda depends on the scenario, but if you're trying to go your maximum speed around the ramp, you need, you want friction to assist you with that turn. So that means it's gonna go down in, inside the ramp. Now again, because the net acceleration is horizontal, we still have to project all these, like this one is still the same, that's angle theta. But I have to, the frictional force will only have a portion um, in the horizontal direction that I care about, like there. It's gonna have a vertical direction and a horizontal direction component, right? And uh, this angle here will also be theta, okay? And so if I look at the x and the y directions, the, the, in, the, uh, in the horizontal, sorry, in the vertical direction first, I have fn sine theta, oh, sorry, cosine theta, would have to equal mg plus, um, sorry, uh, my fn cosine theta, would have to equal mg plus this portion of the vertical, which would be force of friction sine theta. And force of friction sine theta, by the way, uh, the force of friction is mu times the normal force. Well, it can be, it may or may not be, because because what kind of friction is this? If, if, if we're not sliding up and down the ramp, this is static friction that's helping me. So this would be static friction. Um, anyway, so that would be the setup, and then the x direction, you would have not only the normal force, you would have the normal force, which would be nf fn sine theta, like we did before, but you would have a little bit of friction, which would be force of friction cosine theta, and that equals mv squared over r. Okay. So that's kind of the, the idea, what would friction do? But you have to be a little more careful and you don't do, the, the big part I, was, I wanted to talk about the banking was that really, you're not gonna do your X and Y up and down the ramp, like we do, like when you're sliding up and down the ramp, when you're moving at a banked and you're doing a circle, because the acceleration is all horizontal, um, you wanna do just horizontal normal up down for the Y direction and left right for the X direction.